Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick to the Com video, we're going to be once again tackling Zen rumors. It won't be long until AMD, of course, formally announce their plans for Zen on the desktop at least with their new Horizon event. And it's going to be rather interesting, at least in my opinion. But until then, there are, of course, a lot of rumors circulating around. And the latest of which is a chart and a slide which are popping up on various websites, including Reddit. And people are once again debating the validity of these slides. And I'm going to give my two cents on this. And also, since I'm making a video anyway, I thought I'd include a few more thoughts and opinions regarding the 490 because I have had a couple of people message me giving their takes on the 490 as well as a whole bunch of comments of course on the previous videos that I put together and I have been mulling over what 490 could be the RX 490. So I guess the first thing to do is to go through both the slide and the um, well chart. Now my personal opinion, I'm going to say this right up front, and it might be a bit of a buzz killer. I believe both of these are fake. Now, you might say to yourself, well, gee, that, that is a bit of a deflation. Why? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Um, the first of which is that the slide and the, and the chart both are very easy to fake in that the background for both is very readily accessible. You can do a Google and a lot of AMD's official slides look very similar. So as long as you've got font which is roughly the same scale and naturally the same um, you know size and all that stuff that they use which isn't awfully difficult, it's not particularly that tricky to put together a fake. Another issue I have with this is that they have given a price in this slide. Now, one can make an argument that this is a slide that was supposed to be used on the New Horizon event, especially because as of the time of recording, it's about 10 days, well actually slightly less than that away. However, I imagine that that would be really held onto, like, until the last minute. Generally speaking, with pricing, it's like, it's that thing that you want to keep from your competitors the longest because you've got that you've got the air of mystery. You've got the air of well, maybe it's going to be really expensive. You're basically keeping your competitors on the back foot as much as possible. And since AMD are going into this as I wouldn't say the underdogs because there is a lot of expectation riding on them, but they want to have some surprises on stage. And we've all heard the pricing for Zen uh, or Ryzen, other people are calling it Ryzen for the desktop version. I wouldn't be surprised if that's accurate. Other people are calling it the Athlon XP. I, I'm just going to call it Summit Ridge or Zen. But for this video, you can just replace that with desktop, Zen, whatever you want to call it mentally. Now, some of those prices are $300, some of those are $400, so some of those go up to $500, depending on what version of Zen it is and whether it's the so-called black editions which have higher clock speed. Another thing that I'm a bit suspicious about is that they're calling it Z-scaling. Now, we have heard some folks call it Threadripper based upon one, um, one patent that we've, of course, seen from AMD, but it's not necessarily that it is their version of SMT, because it could be anything like Fred Ripper could be anything from their new way of handling multiple graphics cards to something orientated primarily across servers or it could be something entirely different for I don't know data center or it could be something just that they're working on and they haven't even figured out that much about it they may be just painting the name because the actual patent itself is so it's so loose in terminology. It's basically like set me saying to you, well, um, I made a patent for a new thing for a car. And then you say, well, okay, what's the patent? Um, well, it's for any form of transportation. And it is, you know, for anything that has more than one wheel. And it can carry a load, whether it's a person or, you know, a brick. 
and then you say to me, okay, well, that doesn't really narrow it down. You know, can you give me any more than that? No, 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 no that's about as ambiguous as I'm going to be. That's pretty much as ambiguous as these claims are because they they list everything. Uh, that's the issue with the patents. So, you know, I'm not saying they're not, but eh. The, Athlon, the AMD XP CPU architecture, uh, I would kind of like it if they brought back the XP name, I've got to admit, but I also believe personally that it might be going back a bit. Uh, I don't know if they would do that. I would kind of like it if they did. I don't have any particular affinity and love for FX or whatever they happen to be calling their current line of processors. I'm not that enthralled by the name. So I wouldn't mind if they went back to XP. And in a way, there is certainly something to be said about them going to XP. But I don't know. The other issue is that in the chart, it's listing some Zen processors as with non-SMT. I, in other words, non-hyper-threading, non-multi-threading. So in other words, if you've got eight cores, that's all you've got. It's possible that they might go that route. The only reason I would say it's possible is that it is, I don't know enough about their architecture and we don't obviously know where the faults in the processor can lie. So for example, is it possible that this particular version of the CPU will have certain parts of it disabled? Like, will it have less cache enabled? Will it have, oh I don't know, certain parts of the processor disabled? And we can see the TDP is lower, so it's possible that they'll do that for processors which don't have the all of the function units for the, the full-blown Zen. We just don't know. And it's such an ambiguous, but my personal opinion is that the slides are fake. Um, but, you know, here we go. Guess we'll know very soon. No, I know, look, they'll probably be like, yeah, here's Zen, here's a few performance numbers, Bob's your uncle. And then they'll be like, uh... Okay, what's the pricing at AMT? I'll just be like, what pricing? We didn't say we are going to mention pricing. Wait until next year. <laughs> <sighs> but anywho, um, I do also want to give a few opinions regarding the 490. Now, I would hasten to add this is not based upon a new rumour. I would also hasten to add that this is not based upon an industry insider that's whispering. This is my personal opinion. And also going over some of the... Um, opinions that I've got feedback from you guys. So, I believe the 490 is as follows. I think there's three possibilities now. Um, I originally thought that the 490 did not exist. I, I was pretty sure that it wasn't going to happen at one point. But now we're getting more rumours and more benchmarks and all this bollocks that's happened over the past couple of weeks i'm starting to believe that there is a card which is a 490 version now there's two options one it is going the first two options are one it's going to release early next year if it releases earlier next year let's say for the sake of argument january to february i'm much more likely to assume that it is actually polaris based if it's la later let's say if it's more towards April May time I'm pretty damn sure it's going to be Vega based because I was it would make no sense whatsoever the third option is it's not going to be called the 490 it was originally going to be called the 490 but once again because of the proximity now well assuming Vega remains on schedule and it looks like it is once again to quote Lisa Su they're aiming for the first half of 2017 for launch so that really gives them until like May, June-ish time. We can probably expect at the latest to at least hear a release date for the card. Let's assume that that is the case. There is a good possibility that they might just call it the 500 series card, which is possible. Which means that we might not see a high-end 400. But let's assume that that isn't the case. Let's assume that it is Polaris-based just for a moment. So there's two options for Polaris based. Well, I, I guess there's three, but one of them is incredibly unlikely. The first option for the Polaris is that they've added more compute units and its entire new version of Polaris. Let's just call it, for the sake of this video, Polaris 9. So it is with, let's say, 56 compute units and it has a whole bunch of shaders and it has a partridge in a pear tree. 
My personal opinion, though, is that that's kind of unlikely. It would mean a radical redesign of Polaris, and I don't feel that that's very, very likely at this stage. So that leaves us with the two most likely scenarios if it is Polaris. The first is it's a dual Polaris card in the way that we've seen many dual cards before. I don't really need how it, to explain how it works. You've got two GPUs which are basically bolted onto the same PCB. The big ass caller sits across both. You've got two memory pools for both G GPUs and essentially it operates in Crossfire. But another possibility, and I, I got to think of this because a couple of people have messaged it to me, but also I was thinking about how... Sony approached the PS4 Pro's GPU and we had Mark Cerny say several times over it's like the wings of a butterfly um, basically the GPU is in two halves and it's basically all squeezed together on an MCM multi-chip module and remember the PS4 GPU essentially is one big ass sock along with the CPU and a whole bunch of other crap that they've squeezed onto the same piece of silicon yes crap is the technical term for it as well so I do wonder if it is a large ass version of the Polaris 10, perhaps with some cut C CUs for heat reasons, maybe running at slower clock speeds. As we all know, it has 36 for the high end um, Polaris 10, that would be the RX 480, and it's running about 1266 megahertz. Obviously, your mileage will vary if it's like a aftermarket version, which is, let's say, got a subtle overclock. So, I do wonder if Polaris. Um, if it is Polaris based, if it's going to be the 490 with basically two GPUs smudged together onto the same core with a core clock of around, let's say, 1000 to 1100 megahertz, and let's say for the sake of argument, rather than 36 CUs for each half, it will instead be, I'm just throwing out a number, pulling out my ass of, let's say, 30 to 32 which would still be an awful lot of performance and I I would imagine that if they were to do it like this and obviously I don't know the ins and outs of how they would actually construct the driver and how the cores would distribute workload but I imagine that the basically the, the, the actual workloads themselves would be better, much better distributed over the core uh, sorry, over all of the compute units, and therefore I imagine to the OS, into the game, it would probably see the GPU as a single core, uh, sorry, as a single GPU rather than two, rather than crossfire. And that would possibly explain why the benchmarks are so good and it's not really getting the crossfire hit. And that might be why it's scoring between the GTX 1070 and 1080. But that is a theory. The other idea, of course, is it is Vega, which is always a possibility if it's released late. Anyway, as I said, these are just some theories I've pulled out of my ass. So, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, at the end of the day, we're not going to know what, what the card is, if it even exists, until AMD decide to tell us, basically. Which sucks. Um, so, I guess there's that. And my only other question, ignoring AMD for a moment, is what the hell is happening to the 1060 Ti? And what the balls is happening to the 1080 Ti? And what the hell is happening to the supposed tweaks to the Pascal? The GTX 11 series, I guess you could call it, from NVIDIA. Because, well, I want NVIDIA to be also be very competitive, because I think that's good for the industry, as I've mentioned multiple times before. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts. Take care of yourselves. If you can, give the video a like, because as we all know, YouTube's algorithms are apparently about as much use as... Oh, I don't know. What's really useless? Um, I can't actually think of much that's much worse at the moment than YouTube's algorithms. So, yeah, leave your suggestions in the box. So, if you can give me some comments... Um, you know, do the normal stuff to interact with the video so that YouTube doesn't screw us over. That'd be absolutely spiffing. But yeah, pretty much. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.